I've just picked up the Kawasaki and uh, got some cargo netting for my backpack. It's the 6th of August and uh, on the 6th of August on 12 a.m. the motor vloggers and motorcyclists alike head out in unison to uh, enjoy riding to together discuss a certain subject and the takes on that subject by the different runs of life there isn't actually a solid subject we are supposed to discuss but it's more just a general let's all how to let's all head out together and share this experience now usually this is with um, this is accompanied by a group ride but not this year uh, usually uh, Ace and Slapside arranges it and he is currently on holiday and I was supposed to be on holiday today but I postponed it till Monday due to work so I didn't plan anything but I was confident I was going to participate now the subject I'm going to address in this uh, here video is actually the tie into my uh, trip whether I, sh whether I should go in leathers or in textiles now I realize that this is a subject that many people have already or already addressed as you know it's something we need to always consider the pros of textile are obviously that they're more water resistant and the cons are that they're not as protective as, uh, as the leathers now I personally prefer leathers over textiles because they feel, make me feel a lot more safe uh, they give me a lot of confidence on the bike whereas textiles are basically just regular clothes that are well just, just one notch above regular clo clothes I guess so yeah I don't know like I suppose textiles could be more comfortable in on long rides because uh, the leathers I have are actually loaned from a friend because I don't have my own leathers after my crash uh, I didn't get them repaired and I don't think I still fit them so you know if there's uh, any uh, big uh, big brand wanting to uh, spot me on a uh, leather motorcycle suit let me know <laughs> but uh, yeah I don't have my own leather suit yet just yet but I have one I can use and I've actually got it at home now and I, I, don't, I don't know it, I'm probably going to head out in leather but I am going to regret it every time it rains and it's the UK and specifically you know I'm going from South England to Northern Scotland like North, 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 North Northern Scotland no seriously like far far north and uh, it's bound to rain like I don't think in the history of the UK there has ever been an entire week where it's not had, where there was no rain. So yeah, there's that, which I need to think about, and. Uh, that also leads to the question what do you guys do when you go on a trip so not like a, a ride for a day but if you go away for the weekend or uh, if you go on holiday on your motorbike what do you wear do you wear textiles or do you perhaps wear leathers or do you wear leathers and have like waterproof clothing or coveralls uh, at hand in case it rains like what's uh, what's your strategy guys So yeah, they're also saying the the 600s aren't doing too well because of uh, EU uh, regulations and shit. It would be a shame because I absolutely love this bike.
so like the CBR 600 RR that line has been cancelled by Honda but yeah the same the 600 Supersports aren't doing too well the 600 RR has been cancelled and um, at the same time people are saying that the 600 isn't doing very well Kawasaki's back doing the 636 again which I am I've been told is superb so I don't know I mean there's a lot of EU regulations that are going to make, going to make it very difficult to make a solid uh, 600 but I'm pretty sure they'll do it I mean you know because th it's not just the EU regulations really it's also that they're making it more and more difficult to use like the 600 used to be like the starter bike uh, I started on a 600 Super Sport but obviously uh, then the, we had the Dutch regulations that uh, needed it well it needed to be restricted because um, we've got a power based restriction in the Netherlands where your bike can only have uh, 11, 35 or 4 kilowatts of power and when I got my license a, a similar system used to be in place but said that when you were a novice rider, a beginning uh, rider, your bike could only have 25 kilowatts. And we had these rings you had to put in your carburetor to actually restrict it that way. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think it was very good for the bike, but it works. And I could ride my 600 Super Sport. Then after two years, when I got my full license, didn't have to do any tests or anything, um, I could ride unrestricted. So you just take the rings, um, put it on you know obviously test it make sure the fuel and air were correctly set up but then you had the perfectly fine perfectly fine 600 super sport but now you need to start on an 11 kilowatt bike which is basically 125 cc or 11 kilowatts and not that many bikes can be restricted to 11 kilowatts legally so what well, that's basically made it so that you don't start on the 600 anymore I mean, as you obviously see, a lot of people are just saying sod it and starting on a 125 Super Motard or Enduro. Because at least then you'll have the torque. I mean, it's either that or if you want to have a, uh, a fun time, go for a two stroke. But two strokes obviously mean you need to faff about with the fuel and the maintenance so yeah that's made it so that a lot, of, a lot less people start on a 600 which is probably not good for the market and I've also well I don't know if this is just for the Netherlands or for other areas as well but I'm noticing that a lot of people are just opting for leader bikes I mean I get that leader bikes are quicker and easier and all that but I actually like to you know I like to make an effort to go fast instead of just twisting my wrist and you know being at risk of losing my losing my license I mean that's honestly it like if if there weren't any laws or anything I'd probably ride, ride around on leader bike I mean for sure but it's so easy like you can practically break any speed limit in first gear on an R1 I mean that's what I found when I test ro rode it whereas on the Kawasaki I'd need least need to be in second gear I mean I haven't actually looked at statistics or sales figures or anything so I don't actually know how the 600 is doing but I know that when people are shouting stuff they become a self-fulfilling prophecy like take Pokemon Go when people said it was gonna be a hype it was bound to be a hype because if people say it's gonna be a hype that's exposure if people say the 600 600s are dying then people are going to think twice about buying a 600 which makes them sell less and you know etc but I'm, I'm not overly confident that the 600 is going to die out I, I accept and realize that they're in a uh, pretty difficult spot but with all the adaptations they need to do but um I think they can stick it out I think they can make it work and I mean for the meantime I'm just going to enjoy the 636 I mean I love I love this bike 
they talk about selling it all the time and it well you know it left me hanging twice but I absolutely love riding it absolutely love riding it but yeah we'll see only time will tell in the meantime I'm just gonna enjoy uh, this ride around gonna visit some nice places probably take some pictures for Instagram I'm not entirely sure because I've got a lot of preparation to do for the holiday as well I look forward to seeing all your uh, old experiences and videos up until that time that I do I am Sir Chicken Strips and I hope you all have a lovely day peace Ba 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 